in today's lecture i would be focusing on the signs and symptoms of basal ganglia disorders here in this particular chart i have enumerated all the signs and symptoms along with a picture of the parkinson's patients which i would be explaining into course coming back to the basics of the basal ganglia the basal ganglia is connected between the cortical association area and the premotor cortex and motor cortex the information going from a cortical association area goes to the motor premotor cortex along with that it consults the basal ganglia and then their inputs are also considered for the voluntary action this is the voluntary action now here if you are if you are looking at this point here the same thing cortical association area sends information to the basal ganglia and the basal ganglia in turn uh, talks to premotor cortex uh, premotor cortex and then premotor cortex uh, gives back the information to the basal ganglia then it will come back to the motor cortex that is uh, Uh, motor cortex and then subsequently uh, to the motor neurons of the spinal cord so that is the plan of a voluntary movement which i have been uh, discussing about now moving further these are in brief these are the parts of the basal ganglia here i have named five parts the caudate nucleus this is caudate nucleus these are lateral ventricles there these are two thalami caudate nucleus then this is putamen this part is putamen this this is also blue and this is also blue and they are put together they are known as a striatum then we have these pinkies the globus pallidus externa globus pallidus interna and uh, this globus pallidus interna externa and the putamen put together they are known as a lentiform nucleus then we have the this is thalamus the subthalamic nucleus subthalamic nucleus here and then the substantia nigra this yellow one is the substantia nigra now this the brick red this uh, this is uh, this part is the ponto pedunculate nucleus these are the basic parts of the the basal ganglia i repeat caudate nucleus putamen globus pallidus subthalamic nucleus substantia nigra i have named numbered them 1 2 3 4 5 in addition the pontopedic peduncular nucleus and the thalamus they receive inputs whatever the outputs coming from the gpi they go to the thalamus and to the pontopedicular nucleus now these are the uh, the connections of the basal ganglia the first one is the direct circuit which i explained in my previous class wherein the premotor cortex gives to striatum from the striatum goes to interna globus pallidus and then to the thalamus and the motor cortex here is the uh, loop this is the premotor cortex to the striatum striatum consists of caudate nucleus and putamen and then it goes to the globus pallidus interna and then from the globus pallidus interna the fibers reach the thalamus and back to motor cortex part of the information also reaches to the ponto pedunculular nucleus of the uh, reticular system especially the brain stem reticular system and from the motor cortex the corticospinal tracts descend and in the medulla uh, they cross to the opposite side so that means whatever happens to the right side of the basal ganglia it will affect the motor functioning of the left side so that means the contralateral side this is a, a direct path yesterday i mentioned about what happens to this direct path because uh, you have a one transmitter here excitatory transmitter here this is gaba here inhibitory transmitter gaba here inhibitory transmitter 
and then uh, glutamate here, the excitatory transmitters. The product of plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, minus would be plus. So that means the impulses reach into the motor cortex and to the pontopeduncular nucleus are uh, excitatory in nature and they produce the increased or hyperkinetic activity. So that is why the arrow uh, thickness is more. This is about the direct circuit. Now we have the hypokinetic loop or indirect circuit. In this indirect circuits, what happens from the striatum, that means from the premotor cortex, it reaches to the striatum, the excitatory inputs. The striatum sends information to the globus pallidus externa, globus pallidus externa. And from the globus pallidus externa, the, uh, it will send information to the subthalamic nucleus. And the subthalamic nucleus uh, in turn communicate to globus pallidus interna. And the globus pallidus interna uh, again uh, talks to thalamus and uh, from thalamus it is going to motor cortex and the uh, pontopeduncular nucleus. If you are looking at the circuitry here, it is a, a plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus, minus. And if, you, if the product of all these things would be minus, thus the output coming, output going from thalamus are uh, inhibitory or hypokinetic. So if you, if you are looking at the previous one, this arrow from thalamus to cortex was a thick arrow I made. Here I have made a thin arrow that indicates the, it will be inhibitory, the impulses reaching her, here are uh, fewer or less. That is uh, the inhibitory circuit or the hypokinetic uh, loop. Then I mentioned about, uh, in addition to these two direct circuit and uh, indirect circuits, this is, uh, this is the direct circuit here. This from here to here is the direct circuit, indirect circuit here through the GPE, subthalamic nucleus, and there is one more, uh, the special ganglia uh, nucleus in the uh, midbrain, in the midbrain, that is substantia nigra. These substantia nigra, so this sends a, a dopaminergic uh, neurons to the striatum, what is known as a nigrostriatal tract. The nigra receives, substantia nigra receives the inputs from several parts uh, of the brain, especially from the premotor cortex, which are not shown here, from the premotor cortex, then uh, the nu nucleus accumbens from the brain stem and various other regions of the, the thalamus and all other parts, they give the information to the parts compacta. So that means whatever information uh, going there, they would be excited. Now, these nigrostriatal tract, that means substantia nigra has a two components. One component is a parse compacta that contains uh, the dopaminic, dopaminergic neurons and uh, uh, the substantia nigra reticularis, that the parse reticularis uh, that contains uh, uh, gabargic neurons. Now, what happens to the parse compacta? So this will be, uh, this will refine the direct circuit activity or indirect circuit activity. That means a hyperkinetic motion or hypokinetic motion. If you, if you are looking at that, uh, so the so nigrostriatal secretes dopamine, the, the neurons which are reaching to GPI from striatum are expressed with uh, the dopamine one receptors and these dopamine one receptors are excitatory in nature that further enhances the activity. This part of the, this is a direct circuit. Indirect circuits, this inhibits there and the inhibition leads to the inhibition, greater inhibition of the uh, thalamic output. So that means uh, these two things, uh, they, they are uh, uh, acting as a fine tuning. And this fine tuning is further adjusted by the intrastriatal uh, cholinergic neurons intrastriatal cholinergic neurons and uh, these cholinergic neurons acetylcholine exerts its action on uh, receptors acetylcholine receptors 
the muscarinic receptors and the nicotinic receptors. The neurons in the direct circuit are expressed with the muscarinic receptors, which are inhibitory in nature. So that means uh, this is more uh, the dopamine one, the dopamine excites or increases the output of the uh, direct circuit and uh, the muscarin uh, uh, suppresses the output of uh, so there is a balance. Similarly, the dopamine 2 receptors uh, that uh, decreases the output uh, and that will be balanced by the nicotinic uh, acetylcholinergic actions. So this is in brief about uh, the uh, overall circuitry of the basal ganglia. Now, so I have also mentioned that there are four neurotransmitters here. One first one is a glutamate. This is glutamate here. The blue ones are the glutamate. And uh, this uh, red one are the GABA. That means uh, uh, from the striatum to the globus pallidus externa or to the globus pallidus interna, it is GABA. From the globus pallidus to subthalamic nucleus, the pallido subthalamic tract, it is GABAergic. Then uh, subthalamo and uh, pallidal, this is a glutamatergic, and uh, from the pallidothalamic tract is GABA -ergic. So now, thalamocortical projections are glutamatergic. That is what I have uh, mentioned here on the back, on the, on the side of this uh, particular, these things. Now, moving on, I just, in the last class, I mentioned about the functions of the basal ganglia. I repeat, the planning, programming, and sequencing of the voluntary actions. So that means the entire the voluntary actions is split into number of items and all those plannings and programming, including the sequencing is done here. Then the second part is the execution of the pattern of movements. The pattern of movements, walking, talking, running, swallowing, or whatever the patterns are to be executed and they are executed. And this is through the putaminergic circuit. So that is from originating from the uh, pre-motor cortex the motor cortex and then comes to the uh, striatum or putamen, then from putamen through direct and indirect circuits, it comes back to thalamus and back to the uh, motor cortex for action. Then there is a third third function is the cognitive control of motor action that is a corded circuit. This receives inputs from the entire cerebral cortical areas, uh, starting from the prefrontal cortex, the insular cortex, then uh, the limbic cortex, and then uh, the sensory cortex, and uh, the occipital cortex that is visual, and the auditory cortex that is uh, for the uh, auditory signaling. And all those things are combined together that, that gives the cognitive uh, component, that gives the cognitive, uh, cognitive aspect of the particular uh, event. And that is analyzed through the hippocampus and other areas of the brain, uh, including the prefrontal cortex, and brings about the voluntary action. I mentioned about the other day about the snake in the bed, how you jump out of the bed or any blast or any other conditions or for any action there is always a cognitive or learning so we have already knowing that particular action what it does okay so that cognitive control of the voluntary action so that means you are standing on the cliff and suddenly you lose the balance so at that time you don't have time to think you have to balance or you have to bring back Otherwise, you will fall down in the valley. So that piece, uh, the, come back to the normal, is a, a cognitive component. Then timing of the voluntary action. So that means uh, uh, when to, whether, uh, that means if you are passing a road, whether you would be able to pass a road between the various, uh, the uh, vehicular traffic, or uh, placement of a ball, or giving a shot, or doing any voluntary action. So that is the timing. Then scaling, I mentioned about uh, the scaling, the uh, writing on the paper, pen, or uh, writing on the chalkboard. So you just see the difference uh, you create uh, in the size of the letters. 
get a scaling of the voluntary action. Also, if you have to throw a ball for five meters, and if you have to throw a ball for 50 meters, the intensity of, or a force you use to utilize that so that it is scaling. And modulating the muscle tone and posture as required. Yesterday I have shown a number of pictures wherein every action is associated with a posture. And that is to be modulated according to the plan of the work. Then the basal ganglia dampens the oscillations, normal oscillations present in the agonist and antagonist group of muscles. So these agonist and antagonist group of muscles have a continuous oscillations. They are suppressed. And then that is, that is why we don't have tremors. So these are the dampening of the oscillations. Then the basal ganglia acts as a switch for the voluntary action, either turning on or turning off. I just list here the disorders of basal ganglia. So one is Parkinson's disease. It's one of the important thing for your examination point of view. Then comes the Huntington's disease. Then we have a Sydenham's chorea. Then we have dystonia. Then we have a bellismus or hemibellismus. It is because of the uh, subthalamic involvement. Then we have a turret syndrome or tics, unwanted repeated movements or sounds. That is uh, another disorder. So that means there are uh, persons who are always uh, trying to do some uh, uh, movements, uh, either eye eyeball movement or uh, the facial features or the hand movement. Uh, these are called tics. Or uh, some of uh, uh, some of the patients, uh, they will have, uh, they will vocalize. They say some words. So some uh, uh, maybe these words, uh, these are unwanted words. They are they produce the sound, and uh, I don't know that vocalization is also a part of the tick. Then we have a Wilson's disease. Wilson's disease is a basal ganglia disorder where there is a, a degeneration of the lenticular nucleus hepatolenticular degeneration. Copper accumulates there and then that would destroy this lenticular nucleus. Then we have ticks. These ticks are here in the turret syndrome. Then there are tardive or a spasmodic dyskinesia. These are the disorders of the basal ganglia. Of them, uh, what we will be discussing most of the time, the Parkinson's disease, the Huntington's disease, uh, bellismus, then we have uh, uh, these uh, ticks. Maybe I would deal with them uh, in the subsequent uh, class. In the subsequent class. Now, about these are the disorders, and all these disorders have one or the other type of uh, manifestations. One or the other type of manifestations uh, I have listed here. So now I have listed nearly 12 uh, the signs and symptoms of uh, basal ganglia disorders. The manifestations, I mean, how these uh, patients with the basal ganglia disorders uh, present to the doctor. So now one of the one of the thing is a tremor, a resting tremor. This is a, a continuous rhythmic motion. That is one. Then the muscle is rigid. That it is a rigid muscle rigidity. The first second is the muscle rigidity, and this rigidity is the lead pipe or cogwheel. Then there is a poverty of movement that is a, that is called akinesia or bradykinesia. Poverty of movement. Then there are abnormal dance-like movements that is chorea. Then uh, there are sudden flail movements, so sudden jumping of the limbs like, like this flailing, flailing of the uh, limbs, that is bellismus. Then there are uh, what are called ethitosis, that is a slow riding movement. So if you, if you see, the, see my, this thing continuously, uh, you will have a very slow motion, the slow riding uh, movements, uh, that is ethitosis. Then dystonia is a sudden uh, contraction of a particular group of muscles, then not able to perform any actions. So resulting in uh, the abnormal posture and abnormal motion, even leading to falling down or skipping. 
then disturbance of posture and equilibrium and the tone so that is a disturbance to posture and equilibrium and the tone or uh, um, seen as a posture that means a, a posture of the basal ganglia disorder he will have a, a stooped especially the parkinsonian posture is a, a stooped posture that is a, a universal uh, flexion then the gait, gait changes, uh, gait is uh, uh, the fascinating gait as though the person is counting the uh, gaits, the, the steps, these are short steps, then a slow and counting uh, one another, the fascinating gait. Then we have the speech because of the echinacea, because of the uh, rigidity, because of the tremors, the speech is stuttered, slow, and poorly articulated. So speech disorders. So then the writing disorders, so that means he is not able to write fluently. fluently. So they, and even the writing, the scaling becomes a, a minimum because of the hypokinesia or bradykinesia. So that means there is a, what is called a micrographia. Then the ticks, that means abnormal uh, movements are uh, this uh, uh, movements of the eyeball or uh, the movements of the tongue or the facial muscles and so on. So these are some of the signs and symptoms. I just uh, read again, tremors, rigidity, echinacea, bradykinesia, chorea, choreatic movements, bellis muscle movements, atetosis, dystonia, Altered posture and equilibrium, the gait, altered speech, micrographia, and ticks. These are the signs and symptoms of a basal ganglia. Now, examine these signs and symptoms one by one. Now, tremors of Parkinsonism. These tremors of the Parkinsonism are rhythmic movements. Tremors are rhythmic movements. These tremors appear in the resting when the person is resting, he always have this type of uh, uh, tremors. You can just see that. These are uh, coarse. You, you just see that uh, these are coarse tremors. And also, it will be, see, as if uh, the rolling the pill in between the hands. You can just see, if you can see my uh, hand there, a uh, pill rolling uh, tremors. These are resting tremors. When the person is at rest, even if he is keeping in the side, though I am just trying to uh, elevate my hand here, so it, he cannot do like that, and then he will have a continuous uh, a pill rolling uh, uh, motion. That is the type of tremor. And these tremors, if they start performing action, they disappear. So that means uh, uh, they disappear uh, by when person begins to perform. And uh, it is because of uh, the lack of inhibition which the GPI, the basal ganglia outputs, reach to the pontopeduncular nucleus because the pontopeduncular nucleus uh, controls the pattern activity of the uh, these uh, rhythmic actions of uh, various uh, uh, excitatory in uh, these agonist and antagonist group of muscles in addition to the cortical, these things. Now, the lack of inhibition, if these are not dampened, if these are not dampened, agonist and antagonist group of muscles, they will oscillate. Now, the tremors of Parkinsonism is often discriminated by the tremor of the cerebellar disorder. In the cerebellum, what happens? The tremors happen when a particular person tries to bring in uh, certain uh, objects reach the certain orchid, certain objects, uh, then he will have a tremor in holding it. Just like uh, if you are going and uh, uh, trying to hold a cup or an object, uh, when you reach the near the object, uh, there will be a sort of a uh, this thing that overshoot or undershoot mechanism in which uh, the uh, the muscle movement will go. These are called accent tremors accent tremors. So that means uh, they are not uh, resting. So when the particular perform, person performs an action, that is a tremor. 
and the, these action tremors are limited at that time only they are not pill rolling and they are present during action and it is because of the cerebellar uh, uh, that uh, particular checking or uh, uh, the comparator aspect of the servo uh, inhibition is not there there is a overshoot or undershoot the servo mechanism uh, fails that is about the uh, tremor of the uh, cerebellar disorder now rigidity in the basal ganglia dis disorders the muscles are rigid especially in the parkinson's disease the muscles become very rigid tight and it is the rigidity here is sort of a both agonist and antagonist group of muscles they here the biceps and the triceps both have contracted if both have contracted you can just say that uh, a particular limb position it is uh, something like a pipe or something like that it is, it is say for example i i just uh, i i just uh, uh, push it uh, so you have a rigid and if somebody wants to bend it no you cannot bend it because both the extensor and uh, the flexors are uh, the agonist and antagonist group of muscles are uh, in are contracted so that is a, a lead pipe rigidity and uh, when you try to uh, flex it or when you try to bend it you cannot bend it is it it appears like a lead pipe or sometimes it may give away but it does not give away uh, just like a clasp knife rigidity as it happens in case of spasticity here it gives away as if it is in a stepwise manner cogwheel cogwheel rigidity so rigidity here uh, lead pipe rigidity as a continuous resistance or uh, the intermittent resistance that means it gives in the breaks it gives in the breaks like this so cogwheel type of rigidity rigid throughout the passive movement as if bending a lead pipe or gives away intermittently as happens in case of a cogwheel the rigidity or a stiffness or inflexibility of limbs it it can happen with the limbs the neck muscles the trunk the this is a primary motor symptom of the parkinson's disease now this rigidity leads to what the the stiff inflexible muscles and do not swing while walking because the muscles are rigid the person cannot move it they are not loose they are not loose they can they cannot move uh, this thing they cannot swing while walking because of the rigidity there may be pain and muscle cramps are seen because the muscles are contracted continuously there may be muscle cramps and pain and because of the rigidity rigidity of the facial muscles the facial muscles become uh, fixed these are called a mask like appearance of the facial muscles now in the person the patient is in, he, he complains of he cannot turn the other side uh, turn to the other side in when sleeping in the bed so that means a difficulty in a turning over in the bed even because of muscles are rigid he cannot get out or uh, start to move from one point to other point because it's he is almost uh, frigid similarly he will because of the rigidity he will uh, uh she will have a trouble in doing any action these actions may be writing or uh trying to give an object to one or buttoning the clothes or performing a routine activities going to the bathroom and taking a toothbrush and uh, um, a toothpaste because a toothbrush and toothpaste you have to hold the brush and you have to uh, take the cap of the the uh, toothpaste then uh, see th so many so many uh, complex uh, moments are there and uh, and squeeze the uh, squeeze the paste and uh, then uh, uh, that requires uh, energy so they have a complex uh, they have a problem in doing these routine activities 
here I have just mentioned writing, buttoning clothes, or performing uh, routine activities. So this is rigidity, and uh, this is what I was trying to talk about: a, a cogwheel rigidity. Cogwheel rigidity means breaks breaks as, as if uh, in cogwheel. Cogwheel means uh, you must have seen uh, how it happens in case of a uh, one one. Uh, teeth to the another teeth so that means you can i can just give you an example of the uh, the bicycle in the bicycle the 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 one wheel is the cog wheel and then that takes up the chain and then moves to the next stage and extra stage something like that so that type of uh, uh, rigidity that means in a stepwise manner it it uh, moves then uh bradykinesia or akinesia the bradykinesia or akinesia or poverty of the movement the movements have become weak they are they do not have enough strength and this is because of the the inhibitory aspect so that that is the hypokinetic motions or hypokinetic circuitry is activated Bradykinesia is often, this term is often used as a akinesia and hypokinesia. Uh, akinesia means uh, absolute loss. Re akinesia refers to the poverty of the spontaneous movement. The spontaneous movement, uh, like facial expressions when we are talking, or associated movements when we are moving, that is the arm swinging during walking. And bradykinesia is a slowness of the movements slowness of the movement so that means he goes one very very slowly uh, to the destination that means you can see in the gate uh, there is a fascinating gate so the other manifestations of akinesia are the freezing sometimes uh, uh, he the person is not able to start or not able to perform any actions that is freezing and uh, even if he wants to uh, get out of that and he takes prolonged or a very long time to get out of that particular freezing motion so that means uh, the echinacea is associated with uh, the freezing and the prolonged time uh, it takes to initiate the movement so that means a, a person is sitting on a chair and he takes a tremendous amount of time because of the uh, one rigidity, the second, the weakness of the muscles or the poverty of the muscles. He will not develop enough uh, uh, tension to get up because if I were to get up from this chair, I have to develop the uh, tension in all my uh, posture muscles, including I should develop the tension in my leg muscles so that I can give a thrust to the ground and then I get up. So that means uh, uh, you can just uh, try to imagine that. So now that that thing happens, uh, so that initiation uh, taking longer time for initiating the movement. Hypokinesia refers to the fact that in addition, it is slow. The movements are smaller. So that means there is a, a two aspects in the hypo, hypokinesia. One, the slowness, and the second, the their uh, intensity is less slow and um, small actions are small or intensity is less little force is developed this is slow and uh, the intensity is smaller so this can be depicted in my as a micrographia is one of the example the patients with the parkinsonism will have the writings they may start with large with the initially then slowly they become smaller and smaller and finally they are becoming faint the finally disappear these are called uh, uh, micrographia then chorea this is a this is a typical Korea Korea moment. You just see that uh, these are not uh, uh, patterned. So he may have uh, see look here the limbs here and this limb and this limb the neck uh, this side and the lips and the tongue and the eyes and the, this. So that means uh, this is a totally a disorderly uh, array of uh, movements. These are hyperkinetic movements. The person will not be able to um, uh, see that. And uh, the chorea is a hyperkinetic movement, presents with a rapid, unpredictable contractions affecting mostly distal limbs here, these limbs, but also the face and the trunk, face and the trunk. Includes the muscles of face, jaw, and the 
trunk. You can just see that. The movements are involuntary and non-patterned with variable speed. Sometimes they are uh, slow and sometimes they are fast. And uh, the directions are also uh, different. And uh, giving an appearance of a frigidness, so that a frigid, frigid Fidgetness, that means a slowness, slowness of the, uh, the motion. Unpredictable nature of chorea uh, distinguishes it from the uh, tremor and dystonia. Dystonia is a, a painful contraction or a, a contracted, a spasmodic contraction of the muscle. A tremor is a oscillations. This is chorea. Maybe I may just like to show you some uh, chorionic motions. Uh, yeah. So these, these are chorionic uh, motions of, of, of an individual. You can just see that uh, even the, the limb here, this limb and this limb, this is one of the chorionic motion and um, that's what uh, you see. Okay, so now, um, so this is about uh, uh, chorea I mentioned. Then comes, uh, we have uh, uh, the bellismus. It's a the involuntary movement, uh, you must have seen uh, persons uh, sometimes uh, going in the street and uh, suddenly they throw away the limbs up, something like that. They throw away the limbs or these bellismus, uh, hemibellismus is only one half of the body is affected and continuously the movements are happening. Continuously the jerking and flinging motions are happening in the extremities. And uh, this is because of the involvement of the subthalamic nucleus of the opposite side. And uh, usually uh, one side of the body is involved, that is a hemibellismus. Let us see some of the hemibellismic uh, movements. Uh, this is a hemibellismus. You can just see that. Uh, can, you, can you see that, uh, that the lady is continuously this limb and this limb? See, these are, these are hemibellismus uh, motions. Okay, so now... So this is another example. See, the, this uh, the, they are just uh, these are ballistic uh, hemibellismus. This this side is a uh, particular motion, particular motion. So look at that. Uh, see how how she is performing with this. Uh, okay, uh, I stop here. Uh, th this is chorionic uh, motion. You just see this individual. These are chorionic motions. These are chorionic motions. This individual. You can just see that. So these are chorionic uh, motions. Continuously, he just uh, maybe see moving the the entire neck, and suddenly see the jaw movement, the lip movements, and uh, yeah, the limbs. See, see, see that limb. How how he is? These are chorionic uh, uh, motions. Uh, he just tried to. He was asked to uh, make the limbs there, and he was not able to control C, how, how he is trying to uh, do that. So these are uh, chorionic uh, uh, motions. The bellismus I mentioned, uh, usually one side, uh, these are uh, flail-like movements, these are jerky movements. You saw that uh, uh, those two ladies, uh, uh, they just throwing their limbs uh, uh, in a different, different uh, posture. Then ectosis. Ectosis are a slow riding movements. If you can just see what I am, these are slow riding movements continuously. They, they are a movement and they are not flail like a bellish muscle. They are slow, slow continuously. Even uh, it may happen the uh, arms, legs. So uh, if, if we were to uh, toes and the feet and uh, all the, even the tongues, fingers. These are fingers, 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 just slow riding motions. And uh, these slow riding motions um, seen in alternating movements, uh, that means with of the agonist and antagonist group of muscles. So they can be indicated by a flexion, extension, flexion, extension, just like this, or a supination and pronation, just like this. Or a foot, you, you can see the aversion and inversion, or uh, uh, lips, Retracting and pursing and uh, twisting the neck or winking and the relaxation of the space, just, just like this.
just like this. The voluntary movement is slow due to the hyperactive antagonist muscles associated with the rigidity and the corticospinal involvement. Hypotonia is seen in this uh, ethetosis. Maybe we will see some ethetotic movements uh, here. Yeah, this is ethetosis. You can just see. You can just see that how the how the fingers so the, how the, he is trying to make that uh, ethetosis uh, movements. These are ethetosis. Okay, so now these are ethetosis movements, and here I have just trying to. Uh, I have shown the actual video video clip of that, and these are ethetotis movements. You can just see how how particular motion, including the the motion of the facial features. Then dystonia. Uh, dystonia is a hyperkinetic uh, movement disorder, in which a sustained and repetitive muscle contractions, repetitive muscle contractions result in uh, uh, twisting and. Uh, uh, repetitive movements are abnormal fixed posture. You just see this individual. Here is the drop attack in uh, drop attack in this boy, wherein suddenly all muscles are uh, going into a spasm. As the dystonia, it is a hyperkinetic moment. It is a hyperkinetic moment disorder in which a sustained and a repetitive muscle contractions result in a twisting and a, a repetitive movements and the abnormal fixed postures. Here, he drops down. Here, there is a tonic spasm of the left side, so uh, in this child. And here, it is the respiratory group of muscles are activated, uh, so they are uh, uh, changing, uh, so there is a hyperventilation. So this, this individual, including the, um, the other uh, accessory uh, respiratory muscles. Then here, in this case, acute dystonic reactions, oculogyric, that means uh, the, uh, the movement of the eyeball, movement of the eyeball, uh, they will go into a spasm. Or uh, oropharyngeal, oropharyngeal, so you have that. Uh, these are dystonia. And uh, dystonia can affect the different body parts, and often the symptoms of dystonia progress uh, uh, through the stages. Some early symptoms include a dragging of leg or a cramping feet, involuntary pulling of the neck. Sometimes we do have that because of the abnormal posture or attitude we have adopted during sleeping. Uncontrollable blinking, that is a repetitive action. Uncontrollable blinking, some persons have that uh, uh, dystonic blinking. Or there are speech abnormalities. They, they may end up with a stuttering. So these are uh, dystonic features. Then comes uh, the disturbance of the posture. The posture is not it's uh, uh, peculiar. So most of the time, the posture is uh, uh, the, this is due to decrease the activation or inhibition of the uh, medullary that is a reticular posture regulating pathways. You see this person, he's a person who's suffering with uh, Parkinson's disease. And uh, here you see that uh, the whole thing, as if the, the head is dropped, head is dropped, and he is trying to, these are all in a flexion mode. He will be entire flexion, this also flexion, everywhere flexion, universal flexion. The tone of the basic reflex operating at the spinal cord level, there is a diminished gamma motor neuron activity. And uh, this diminished gamma motor neuron activity uh, of the uh, that that flexor groups, the posture is uh, the flexion attitude, flexion attitude, and with a forward bending. So you just see that almost all joints are in the flexion. That is universal flexion, as if he is carrying a load on his back, just balancing. The posture, just balancing to hold on to this posture or a stance, and with a great difficulty, as if he is trying to look at the center of the gravity. So that is the uh, what is the picture of the posture and equilibrium and muscle tone. So these things happen here, uh, and uh, if you see that uh, this person has a blank uh, facial expression, hypokinesia, and rigidity of these muscles, the forward tilt to posture slow, monotonous, this person, uh, when asked to speak, 
slow monotonous uh, speech because of the the vocal cords have uh, either reduced power or because uh, there are tremors or because of the rigidity reduced arm swinging let's say akinesia or bradykinesia rigidity and tremor of the extremity extremities here in the head and uh, even in the limbs there will be a continuous tremors even the tongues do have tremors then short uh, shuffling gait short shuffling gait so you see that uh, steps as though uh, he connects uh, one uh, foot to the other and uh, like that he goes on uh, this is a fascinating gait or a short shuffling gait this is about uh, uh, this uh, individual now the gait we are trying to come back with the gait here here uh, in this in individual uh, same thing uh, fascinating gait as though he is counting the steps small and hesitant he is not confident looking on the ground he looks at the ground and uh, balance is not proper and he is not able to because he is not he is not able to come back and sometimes uh, because of the poverty or akinesia he will not uh, be able to come back to the original he may fall down because of the weakness uh, of the muscles so he will have a continuous tremor continuous persistent tremor uh, shuffling gait unbalanced in small steps the uh, typical uh, universal uh, flexion that is the uh, gait of the individual then speech slurred slow speech it's not continuous it's broken because already the vocal cords uh, the the contractions are rigid and uh, the poor contractions and uh, the because the voice is not as loud it is uh, less audible and uh, even he has a difficulty in uh, starting the uh, talking or uh, speech a stuttering impaired ability of the basal ganglia to produce a, a timing cues for initiation of the next motor segment of the speech because uh, if i were to speak so i were to speak because uh, my speech is coming in sequence of events or my thoughts and whatever my thought comes i am trying to explain to you and uh, these sequence or chains are missed that particular next uh, segment of the chain of the speech is missing and that is why they are called a non fluent aphasia that means uh, there is a aphasia is the speech disorder speech disorder and it is non fluent non fluent means uh, he does not have the fluency he is uh, slowed down and he it comes in uh, segments one and uh, with a pause that is the non fluent aphasia the patient has a problem with the speaking his mind uh, as i was talking because the sequence and the chain of actions are uh, not executed as expected the thoughts in the mind do not completely uh, come out of his mouth so that means uh, the thoughts and the actions of the vocal cords they do not uh, match that is why a non fluent aphasia there are missing words sometimes he will not be able to pronounce them or he may just uh, uh, they are lost and uh, the sentences become incomplete and he finds it difficult to speak and the emotional components associated with the speech are missing these are associated suppose uh, if if you if one is uh, happy that emotional aspect of the speech or if you are angry the emotional component of the speech these particular things are missing this is about the speech then comes a handwriting abnormal handwriting what is called a micrographia so this is a, a the handwriting of a normal individual the mary had a little lamb its fleece was white as snow so this is normal this is a normal person he has written it uh, three times without here is the same uh, thing same mary had a little lamb its fleece was as white as a snow so i have taken the the blue lines indicate the the timing so you just see that uh, this is what uh, the, the parkinson's patient has written you just see that he, he started big here and they are non almost uh, they disappear here they become less and small and smaller 
see the, the second attempt, third attempt have become much smaller. This is called a micrographia, micrographia because of the echinacea, rigidity, and the repetition is difficult. Similarly, the person is asked to, it's a normal person when he is asked to do this spiral. So he does it wonderfully. But uh, uh, here, this person with the Parkinsonism, what is happening? Because he, he does it and uh, it becomes a, a tremors because he has a tremors. He has a tremors. That is why it is not as smooth as this. Okay. This is about the uh, graphical uh, aspects. These are fine things. Uh, these are uh, highly uh, evolved the neocortical functions. That means writing and uh, making the uh, pictures or uh, graphs or uh, the drawings. These are all highly skilled activities. Now coming back with the ticks. So the ticks are abnormal, uncontrolled movements. They happen suddenly and they are for a short time. And they are not predicted. Sudden, brief, intermittent, uncontrolled movements. Sometimes these movements may be as sound, so he will vocalize and he says, so, so I have seen uh, some of my friends, they suddenly, they were, uh, they were trying to read, and uh, when they were trying to read, they produce some uh, uh, abnormal sounds, or sounds uh, which uh, are uh, really not expected. So like that, these are sudden, brief, intermittent, uncontrolled movements or sounds these are called a ticks. It is the ticks or blinking of eyes or shrugging of soldiers, so something like that, or uh, tapping the table. Some of them have the habit of uh, uh, tapping the table, or because of the leg movement, some of them they have the leg movements, or uh, uh, blurt out unusual sounds, unusual sounds. They are not normal sounds. May, may, sometimes they may be abusive. Then vocalize offensive words. I have seen uh, uh, both, the, both the situations with my uh, friends when they are studying and seeing something, suddenly they come out with the explosive sounds. So these are ticks. Summary of the manifestations of the basal ganglia disorders, the resting tremor, the coarse, pill rolling, absent, are they uh, remain or they are abolished during action. That means uh, these are resting tremors. Rigidity, lead pipe or cogwheel type of rigidity because of the contraction of both agonist and antagonist group of muscles. A chorea, that is because of the writhing movements and uh, the intermittent uh, violent uh, motions. Sudden violent voluntary movements, that is bellismus. The weakness of the muscles, the poverty of the movements, say akinesia or bradykinesia. Difficulty in starting or uh, stopping the actions. Say, for example, if you are having a Parkinson's patient and he is moving, suddenly you cannot stop him. And if you if you want to stop him, and he will he may fall down. So and uh, problems finding words because uh, the his uh, speech is not linked each other. So he may have. Uh, the problems in finding the proper words for the next. Associate the mood changes, not able to pass the items as expected. Say, for example, if you ask somebody to uh, give, give you the pass the pen situated on the table, so now he will not be able to give it because uh, it requires two aspects. So one, the intensity, scaling, and the uh, timing. Both are required. Uh, timing or uh, just uh, just passing the pen like this, uh, you need to see how far is the person and how much is the force, uh, so he will not be able to perform. The timing and the scaling is missed. The abnormal handwriting I have shown you. There is a micrographia. The abnormal gait that is a abnormal posture. There is a stooping posture. The flexion, all the things, masked face. Fascinating, a short, shuffling gait, uncontrollable, repeated movements in terms of the muscles or a speech, and sometimes a cries.
these are the uh, summaries or the manifestations of the basal ganglia so this is what uh, i have shown in the 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 title picture these are all manifestations of the parkinson's or uh, the basal ganglia disorders tremor rigidity chorea ethetosis bellissimus bradykinesia or akinesia uh, speech disorders the the masked facial expression the starting and the stopping of an action abnormality the posture uh, flexion attitude the gait the fascinating gait the tics the micrographia or the manifestations of the basal ganglia disorders some of the disorders may not so all these 13 or 14 they may not be there in all the basal ganglia disorders some may be uh, missing because uh, depending upon the hypokinetic and hyperkinetic um, circuits they are uh, included in the disorder this is one of the classical uh, uh, parkinsonian uh, uh, patients you can just see that uh, short shuffling gait reduced swinging and the rigidity and the tremor and the slow monotonous uh, slurred speech the flexion attitude and the blank facial expressions okay uh, the books are um, the candles uh, neuroscience the guidance textbook of physiology canong's physiology and uh, i have uh, just uh, consulted this cold spring harbor uh, uh, perspective medicine about the parking uh, this uh, basal ganglia disorders so this is the thing now uh, the assignments uh, describe the parts the connections and the manifestations of the basal ganglia disorders or there is a second question describe the parts the circuitries of the basal ganglia mention various various basal ganglia disorders i have just mentioned the various basal ganglia disorders then write short notes on resting tremors micrographia dystonia ethetosis fascinating gait akinesia cogwheel rigidity chorea bellissimus stooping posture in the next class we will discuss about the disorders of the basal ganglia and those disorders which are of importance to you okay uh, thank you